This video is covered by fair use. It is for the purposes of teaching and criticism, and it is not for profit. Thank you. What we are experiencing in this world, the truth of it, is so much stranger than any fiction story than you could ever, ever imagine. Your reality and our reality is this beautiful geometric scope of experience. The degree that you can recognize through pattern recognition, you are uplifting your consciousness and your ability to perceive higher dimension. That introduces the concept of who created it. The pyramids are housing these keys of information that were built into it so that humanity, when it awakens, will be able to crawl out of the ashes of that duality. Man only suffers because he takes seriously what the gods created for fun. When you realize that... Okay, I have to, uh, I have to jump in here and dissect some of this bullshit and address it. Uh, man only suffers be like, that's wrong, dude. Suffering's built into the realm. Look at deformed children. Look at disabled children. Look at the 10,000 diseases that they've already documented and named for human beings. There's all sorts of suffering. There's mental suffering. There's physical suffering. There's spiritual suffering here. Okay? There's suffering caused by the loss of loved ones. Suddenly, you know, you're, you lose, they lose, someone loses their child. Right? No matter what they view this realm as, that's suffering. An earthquake can hit and they lose their whole family. A hurricane, a tornado could wipe out their home. This happens all the time in this realm. Okay? And uh, the, uh, the way that they venerate the pyramids, I would view it the opposite way of what most on this world do. I think they, they should be fucking destroyed. If they're a key to this realm, then they should be wiped out, as far as I'm concerned. That's the way I look at it. That's the way I look at it. You could say, well, they're one of the seven wonders. So what? This is hell realm. Just like, oh, Mother Earth, Goddess Earth, Gaia. I don't give a fuck. Really don't. This is a prison. You're worshipping the goddamn prison you're in without even realizing it. That you've been in the dream that is this world. You can now play in it. If you knew that death wasn't real, would you change the things you do in this life to achieve a complete mind? Is he gonna talk about all the tricks in death? The manipulation? The love bomb? The frequency weapons? The mind control? the guilt trips, the shame, the creepy creatures, the entities that come and try to convince you to come back here. So you're gonna talk about how um, every near-death experiencer has things in common. One of the big things they all have in common is, common is they're back here. Another one is the vast, vast majority, it's gotta be 99.9% .9 say that they didn't wanna come back here again. They didn't want to come back here. That includes ones with children, ones that have a family they love, a wife or a husband. They didn't want to come back here. Was this just a dream or is it hell realm? Especially once you're out of here. Do they want to come back here again? No, they don't. If it's fun, have you ever been on a roller coaster in an amusement park? And it might be scary at first. You might be a little kid. You might be eight, nine, ten years old, where you're just barely, you might be a small kid for your age, where you're just barely tall enough to get on the ride, okay? And you're only, you might be the only kid on the ride. I was at times. I enjoyed taking risks. You might be a little bit scared. But you know what? It's such a thrill that you want to go back on again, especially if the line isn't too long. I never liked waiting in these long lines. But if the line isn't too long, you know, there's a place in Canada called Canada's Wonderland outside of Toronto. And they had the first stand-up roller coaster in Canada back then, way back. All right? 
and it did, it did loops and all that stuff, and you're standing up, and it was the first time. It was brand new that summer that it was just built, and I went on that thing, and I had a blast, and I wanted to go back on and ride it again and again. Do people want to do that with Earth? if this is just a dream or just a ride or just for fun, once they left their body, they have a near-death experience. They know that death's not real. They're made aware of it then because they've, quote, died. But do they want to come back here and do this shit again and have more fun here? No. No, they don't. So is that very telling? See, people get the wrong idea sometimes when I do these analysis videos. They think, you're just against him. You just hate him. You just... I'm trying to show you something bigger than this guy. I don't know who the fuck this guy is until today. So it isn't about that. I don't have any personal vendetta against this guy. I never knew who this dude was until today. And I still don't know because I didn't really look into him. I just watched some of this video and thought, yeah, this is interesting. This would be interesting to contrast, to cover this as a contrast against my ideas and my views of this realm, life and, quote, death and reincarnation, and suffering, and the trickery that goes on here. This would be good to cover. So please, please, people, calm down a little bit. The ones that go way off track, because you can't learn that way. If you think he's just covering this because he's, he's against this guy, he hates this guy, he blows... No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm using this guy. There's a million others like this guy. He's not alone. There might be a hundred million. There might be a billion. I don't know what the world population is, but there's a lot that view things this way. Okay? Do you understand how, what I'm doing here? I'm trying to teach you something. It's, a, it's not about him. It's about you. It's about you. It's about expressing my ideas and sharing with you and pushing back and showing the contrast between what I see and what most in this world say in different ways. That's what I'm doing here. So please don't get all worked up and say, you hate him and all this stuff. No, I don't. No, I don't. And I really don't want people that are at that level here saying that stuff. Don't Please don't even try to guess who I quote hate. How would you know who I hate? I mean, it's just foolish to do that. It's so foolish. And it gets you off on the wrong track completely. I mean, it's for one thing, it's almost like putting words in my mouth, which I never like. Don't ever do that. And, and as I said, it's also getting you way off track. Well, you can't learn then because you're focused on emotions and guesses and, and my motivation. You have no idea why I did this video here. Okay? I've never been on this guy's channel. Look at the views, though. Look at the views on this. So I don't know how famous this guy is, but in the comments, over 1,300 comments on this video. I'm lucky if I get 80, 100 comments on one of my videos. Believe me, I'm not jealous. So, so now that I said that, people go in that direction. You're way off. I'm talking about what's popular on YouTube and what YouTube promotes, the algorithm. Please just don't get off track. Just drop the assumptions. Watch things with more of an open mind. Try to learn something. It's still possible to learn in this world. It really is. It might help you one day. Study the art of science. Study the science of art. Learn how to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. Hello, beautiful beings. Welcome back to the Know Thyself podcast, where every single week we get the honor and privilege to sit down with a brilliant mind and open heart to allow us to deepen our sense of knowing ourselves. And my guest today is a brilliant individual with an open heart indeed. If you listen to this podcast, Know Thyself, you are here to learn more about the true nature of yourself, to walk in alignment with truth, and to become the most authentically expressed version of yourself. And my guest today is an entrepreneur. He is an author. He is a modern day polymath. 
and somebody who's integrating his innovations across across math, science, and the arts to bring well-being to humanity. He is somebody I... Oh, he's a modern-day polymath. He's getting hyped up here a lot. Is he a modern-day Da Vinci? <laughs> Feel that is on a he's like a modern day indiana jones on a spiritual scavenger hunt to decode cosmic mysteries <laughs> <laughs> and um, i'm really looking forward to diving into all the avenues that we're going to dive into today so robert edward grant thank you for coming on the show thank bro. you so good to be here with you andre yeah so good man um i love to just dive deep right off the bat <laughs> so <laughs> um you know i've been diving deep into your work and you know a fan for a while and it's really beautiful to see uh the coherence that you bring to many different fields. Okay, maybe I should have skipped through some of this, but this guy's fanboying pretty hard, so I don't know who this uh, this guy is that he's interviewing, but maybe he's famous or something. I really don't know. Is he on Ancient Aliens or the History Channel or something? I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't watch TV. I don't have a TV. And I don't want a TV, and I don't, I don't care about television, to be honest. I don't care about whatever is anti-male and anti-white and is uh, just a brainwashing machine for the tiny hats. Right, and that is kind of what a polymath does and is. And my first question is, as you study the intelligence of nature and across the different fields of math and science and art, how do you feel like the geometry of nature is helping us know ourselves? deeper and deeper interesting well i can only speak to my own okay well the fibonacci spiral must mean that there's a creator and it's god right i hate when people do that stuff i mean they jump to conclusions it means there's code does that mean there's a quote god no no it doesn't it doesn't mean anything like that it doesn't mean that this place is run by good whatsoever sure doesn't look like it personal yeah. journey on this. I think it impacts people differently um, because we all have our own window of perception and we can't separate our lens of perception with our reality, right? So I can speak to my particular experience and my particular experience was I went... So we can't just see beyond our own experience? I can't... Uh, basically, I can't... Uh, I haven't suffered in the same ways as the children in slums in India have. So I can't feel the same thing, but can I look at that and ponder it and think about it and realize that that's a piece of the puzzle, even if that's not my personal life experience, that that's a piece of the puzzle of this realm and that it's suffering by design when I see all these deformed children and severely disabled children that will never be able to care for themselves in this realm. In other words, can I see suffering when I'm not miserable, when I'm not suffering? Is that possible? Yeah, it is. For some, it's, it's for me it is. I can do it. Do I see most doing that in this realm? No, I don't. No, I don't. If they have an easy life, they just say that's their experience. They can't see beyond their own experience. They can't think and see beyond themselves. What does that do? That creates enormous blind spots about seeing what this realm is. Enormous blind spots. Went through a very difficult time in 2016 where I had to reconcile betrayal. And you don't ever feel betrayed by somebody that you didn't care about. You only feel betrayed by people that you really cared about. And so there gets to be this massive gap between expectation and what your reality that you experienced was. And instead of um, blaming others, which I probably would have done at you know, earlier stages in my life, I decided to look within and ask myself, you know, maybe my perception on my reality is not exactly as it truly is. 
Maybe I'm seeing the world as I am rather than as it is. And in order to reconcile these things. Yeah, so that is that what abused children should do? To see reality the way it really is rather than where they, you know, shake them ahead. There's so much about this realm that disproves the way this guy sees it. And they call him a polymath and everything else. I had to go and reconstruct my entire objective reality. So the reconstruction process uh, included a deep dive into mathematics, the queen of the sciences, the most objective, right? If you talk to anybody, the nice thing about math is math is just math and you can't, math doesn't lie, right? Light years, speed of light changes too. So yeah, they do lie using math. That's false, I have to call that out. I hate to have to jump in so much, but there's probably gonna be tons that is, is false. And the more that's false, the more that you get famous and the more that you get worshiped for the most part. People love what's false and they rage against the truth. They will rage against me like, like I'm just the biggest demon on earth because I'll keep speaking the truth and they hate to hear it. Um, but at the same time, mathematics is very esoteric. So we have numerology and we have astrology, which is another branch you could argue of mathematics as well. And it's all related to frequency and the entire universe is based on frequency. And then you start thinking about, well, wait a minute, geometry and music are related too. And maybe music is just the geometry that we experience with our ears. And maybe geometry is just the music that we experience with our eyes. And so I got a very personal relationship and a deep dive spiritual relationship when I went through that process to recognize that everything is connected. You know, Leonardo da Vinci famously said, um, to achieve a complete mind, study the art of science, study the science of art, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. And when I kind of heard that for the first time, I started really recognizing, I think what he really meant by that, which is that your reality and our reality is this beautiful geometric scope of experience. And that scope of experience can span across what we refer to as geometry and what we refer to as music and what we refer to as light and what we refer to as sound and what we refer to as matter and what we refer to as, as the, the geometry of space time. All of it, biology, chemistry, is all connected. You know, I can make an argument that says that mathematics in its applied form is geometry. So therefore applied geometry is physics. Applied physics, would then just be chemistry. And applied chemistry would be biology. And applied biology would be psychology. And applied psychology would be sociology. And applied sociology would be philosophy. And applied philosophy comes back to mathematics. So it's this total connection across all of these seemingly disparate disciplines in our life experience that leads us to recognize that, wait a minute, it's not all separate at all. It's all one. And that geometry, Okay, there, there we go. And here comes the oneness shit. I'm not shocked. So he talks about the connections, which is fine. That's fine. My computer right now is connected to the internet as I'm recording this. Is my computer the internet? Is my laptop the internet? No. Is it one? Is the internet one computer? No. It's a whole bunch of computers, millions upon millions, if not quote, billions, I don't know how many exactly. It's a big number of computers and devices connected. Is it one computer? No. Is it all one? No, it isn't. When a group of people hold hands at a wedding, it could be 500 people, let's say, and they form a chain and they're all holding hands or locked in arm in arm. They're connected physically, right? They're connected like a chain. Okay, I agree with that. Are they all one? No. They're still individual beings. 
They're just connected like links in a chain. They're connected, but are they all one? No, they're not. No, they're not. Because they can unlock and walk away, and they're still an individual, separate, sovereign, independent being. Get me? Do they all share one heart just because they joined their hands together or locked arms together in a chain? No. No, they didn't. They each had an individual heart. This bothers some people. Because some people want, quote, oneness so bad that they won't look at the logic that I just said. They don't like hearing that. You can be connected with a lover. You, I could wrap my arms around my girlfriend and hold her with my arms wrapped around her. Are we one? No. She's still a different being than me. We're not one being. Okay? I hope that makes sense, because if it doesn't, I'm not even sure how I can break that down more to people. It's so obvious to me. I'm just trying the best, trying the best that I can, okay? That's what I'm doing here. But I'm speaking to, a, like, I know that the, the most in this realm are completely mind-controlled by oneness. Completely. Geometry in all of its different manifestations and forms across all those different disciplines and specialties is turning us back to recognize the oneness of the universe. And then that introduces this concept of who created it. <laughs> because the thing that with geometry... when I So he says the oneness of this universe and who created it. Who says that you're in a quote universe right now? You might be in a complete simulation of false matrix. Right? And he says the oneness of the universe. Show me the real images of space. Show me the fucking real images of galaxies. Except people that have done, done so with amateur telescopes in their backyard or their rooftop. The other ones are all CGI. It's all fake. So you're believing in something that's fake, fake space, in the oneness of the universe. Surprised you didn't mention spiral galaxies. All right. It's bullshit, dude. You might be a, quote, polymath, but you're gullible as shit. You've fallen for some shit. You stepped in a big pile of shit. You might want to look at your shoes that stink. When I started getting into it, and there's something beautiful you have on your wall just outside Metatron's cube, right? And m most people probably don't know, unless they're into geometry, what the significance of Metatron's cube is. Do you know what? The it's, uh, it's used in uh, the Kabbalah and Kabbalah, uh, Kabbalist mysticism. In the Tiny Hats mysticism, they like the Metatron, and they view it as a god, a deity, basically. Or a demon. Sometimes they view it that. They just straight up demon. I'm not kidding. They do. Okay? The significance of it is? Um, it's the, well, the interconnectedness between the flower of life and, mm -hmm. um, like the meaning behind Metatron's cube. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your explanation. Yeah. I figured you might, might want to hear it. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Most people make that connection you just said, right. which is absolutely correct. Flower of life and Metatron's cube are definitely one and the same thing. Okay. You could say that you're just taking a few of the circles away yeah. and just making sure that the circles that stay are the ones that are next to each other. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's none of the overlapping circles that you have of a flower of yeah. life. But then you connect all of the center points of those circles and it creates Metatron's cube. Right. But a lot of people don't realize that you can form literally out of that one structure all of the platonic solids. Not only all the platonic solids, but all of the Archimedean solids by making another form of Metatron's cube, just offsetting it by 15 degrees. And then having a 12-point perspective, you can have all of the Archimedean, all the Catalan solids.
just proving that we're in a coded realm like a quote simulation of sorts or an organic type of simulation. All right? That's what that sounds like to me. But I want to say this to the people that get all wrapped up in that, in sacred geometry and in mathematics and trying to prove things that way. None of that will get you out of here, out of this realm. You are going to leave your body one day. You could focus on that the rest of your life. But they could code anything into this matrix. And if you're an expert on uh, sacred geometry, for example, and you study that and you study, you know, all this Kabbalah stuff and esoterica, it's still not going to help you get out of here. What you should really work on more is discernment. That's my advice. You could throw my advice right in the trash can, but, you know, I do believe that a lot are going into the recycling bin. Spend your years doing whatever you want, but that's what I would work on. Because none of that knowledge is going to mean jack shit if you get mind wiped again and recycled here again. Then everything you learned here is all gone in an instant. Just in an instant, like zapped and that's it, you're gone. It's gone. Or it's buried so deep that you just can't access it. It might be carried in your spirit somehow. But they basically locked it off from you in a sense and encrypted it, buried it, encrypted it like on a hard drive, put a password on it. And the password is a, a 250 character password and it's all random basically. You have no chance of getting it. Even if you had like a brute force hacker with a dictionary, all these dictionary files and you, you were into hacking, you, you still can't do it. So it's, it's buried, it's repressed. By design. So anyway, if you want it, you can study whatever you want here. Whatever you want. But I would suggest that you work on getting your goal of, hey, I'm going to get out of here and try to remember my knowledge. That's what I'm going to do. You can do whatever you want. Whatever you want. If you think this guy's a polymath, you can say, fuck you, sanity machine. I'm going to go over to this channel and I'm going to start following this stuff and, you know, watch this video that's three hours long and I'm going to try to memorize all this stuff, like Metatron and all that, get all into this kind of stuff. You can go ahead. Have at it. Have fun. Have a blast. But as I, I'm warning you right now, it's not going to get you out of here. It's not going to get you out of here. It's akin to studying a circuit board. And you could memorize it. Every little detail, but it's not going to get you out of this realm. Sorry. Instead of looking at things under a microscope or with a magnifying glass, why don't you try the other way? Step back, look at the big picture of what this whole realm is. Why don't you try that for, for a little while? Look at it that way for once. This guy sure doesn't. He doesn't do that. He doesn't have a clue where he is sure there's going to be a lot of people here just, you know, hyping them up. And So many gems. I had to bet this guy's so brilliant he's headed right for the recycling bin. That's what I think. Because he views this life as just a dream. Just have fun. Right? Except when you get off the roller coaster ride, it doesn't trick you and, and it doesn't mind wipe you. If you see what I'm saying. Virtually every single geometric form that exists in the universe can be made in its regular form out of that one structure of Metatron's cube. So all creation comes from this. And this is one of the things that I did. I took a 24 point perspective. So if you took four Metatron's cubes, right? So you've got six points on each one that form this hex hexagonal form. If you do that in rotation so that you've got a 24 point 
So you're just multiplying mm -hmm. six by four. Mm -hmm. So you're creating four point perspective against the six points. And you connect all the lines of that. It looks like an entirely mess, like a gigantic mess of entropic lines that you could, it gets really confusing because you're like, what the heck am I looking at? But if you can put your consciousness into those lines, the complexity of all those lines, you might be able to see the shape of a square. You might also see the shape of a triangle. And most people can. You might see the shape of a pentagon because it's all in there. You might also see the shape of a, a hexagon or you know, all of the other potential shapes that could exist in polygonal form. But can you also then see a tetrahedron, which is the... I have to jump in here. So the lines that look entropic, as he called it, which is almost the same, it's similar to chaotic. Entropy, chaos. So if you can see these geometric shapes out of the chaos, the chaotic lines or the entropic lines, Freemasonry. Some people are like, what? Freemasonry? It's talking about geometry, all these lines and seeing geometric shapes. Yeah, Freemasonry. Well, how's that Freemasonry? Order out of chaos, seeing the triangle, seeing the square, you know, seeing the hexagon, right? Out of the quote chaotic lines, seeing the order of geometric shapes out of the chaos. So this guy right here is talking about Freemasonry, order out of chaos. I, I'm almost like, I keep thinking of a, a short video I did of <laughs> when I started my channel months ago with Jason from Archaics and, uh, oh man, <laughs> I, I might have, I'm gonna hold back. I might have a laugh attack here, but I was uh, in my studio and it looked chaotic. There was a mess all over my drawing table and I had paint and stuff and palettes and brushes and just like stuff all over the place, which is, it looks like a tornado went through there or it looks like a phoenix went through there, the phoenix event. <laughs> but um, I was doing a parody video of Jason from Archaic saying, you know, this, this, is, this is my brushes, this is, this is my palettes, my paints, my paints. Got my order out of chaos. Got my order out of chaos. And uh, yeah, so they they are they are sneaky sometimes when they talk about this stuff. So he's uh, he's talking about seeing the order in the chaos or order out of chaos, right? You have lines all over the place, but you can see the patterns. You can see the geometric shapes within it. Do I believe this guy's a Freemason? I can't say for sure at this point of the video, but would I be shocked if he was? No, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be shocked if this guy during this video came right out and said, order out of chaos and just threw that right in there. I wouldn't be shocked at all. I wouldn't be shocked at all. But what he's doing here, whether he's a Freemason or not, he's doing masterful speech because he is describing order out of chaos, seeing these shapes. And a shape has order to it, whether it's a square, triangle, circle, you know, hexagon, whatever it is. If it looks like a bunch of lines that are chaos and you see a real shape that's recognizable, a geometric shape, that is order. So anyway, that's what he's doing here. Whether it's intentional, intentional on his part of uh, using masterful speech, which is what Freemasons do, but other people can do it as well, right? It's not limited or restricted to Freemasons. Just like using the number 33, they don't own the fucking number, okay? And I don't let Freemasons own certain things. I don't let them own, I don't let them own magic or numbers or numerology or anything. Fearful people do. And then they own you. Then they own your mind. Then you're afraid of Freemasons. I'm not afraid of them. I'll take them all on. How about that? I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll go into my uh, cocky persona and just say, I'll just fucking take them all on. Some people don't like that about my channel, so be it. You see anyone else on YouTube taking on all these demons the way I am? And you have the demons crying and running and complaining and, you know, everything else and just losing it. They don't have a chance against me. It's not a fair fight. 
all of them versus me, it's not a fair fight. They don't stand a fucking chance. And they have nightmares about me, and they're getting sick. Do you understand that? They're complaining about getting sick because they messed with the wrong person or the wrong being. The three-dimensional version of a triangle, one way to easily say this, can you see a cube? Can you see a dodecahedron? Can you see an icosahedron? Can you see a cube octahedron? Can you see a rhombic cube octahedron? Can you see uh, a durer solid, can you see all of the different shapes that are there? And the degree that you can recognize through pattern recognition and then bold those lines, you are uplifting your consciousness and your ability to perceive higher dimension. Mm. So the more geometric forms you can recognize and track by looking in this mess of lines that looks totally entropic and it makes no sense whatsoever, and then bold those, to me, I call that a higher form of consciousness quotient. Mm. So the more of those lines you can recognize, you're pushing the boundary condition of entropy, which is really just ignorance, further and further away from you as you understand more of this divine encryption that is the universe that we live in. Divine encryption. Divine encryption. So a lot of this just sounds so similar to Freemasonry. It really does, but um, I'll just leave that up to you. <laughs> you can think whatever you want. Wow. <laughs> that you wanted to go deep, right? I now. wanted to go deep, and, and we're going deep. <laughs> Beautiful. And I well, there's the fanboy mo fan moment right there. <laughs> oh, God. Stop making idols out of people, please. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you whatsoever doing that. I mean, I definitely didn't know to the depth in which, for example, the Metatron's cube has... So it's all depth. creation. Yeah, but I feel that, right? Like, and I think that we can, especially in deep meditation, deep stillness, expansive experiences, maybe a psychedelic journey, you can feel the inner, inherent interconnected nature of, of nature and geometry. And you spoke to a lot of things that I want to open up, which is one, we do have a very limited bandwidth of perception, right? Yeah. And if math is a language of the universe... But as we grow and we expand our consciousness, we see how all the fields of chemistry, alchemy, sound, music, physics, they're all different fractals of the same kind of source of divinity. Okay, so he said if math is the language of our universe, well, math is basically the language of a computer. It boils down to binary ones and zeros, on or off, one or the other. Or there's also in between, you know, there's the can also have the in-between, but at the, at the most basic, simplest form, it's like a switch, on or off. So is that our reality? Because then, yeah, it does seem even more like a simulation of some kind. Does it mean we're just living inside of a fucking computer? No, it doesn't. So people that go that far, you've gone to an extreme where you really don't have the evidence to show it. And your view also doesn't ex ha uh, have an explanation for spirit or anything spiritual or supernatural. The nation and come mm -hmm. from the same source. Mm -hmm. And so for your study, like you've been able to put together a lot of how they're really one and the same, right? How yeah. they're all in one mm -hmm. and one and all. So my question is, how does the pattern recognition of seeing how all of these are all interconnected, how does that allow us to know ourselves deeper, develop more self-mastery, or just understand the world at deeper and deeper levels? Because we can have the felt experience of our interconnected reality. But then to be able to articulate it in the way you are and purvey how in waking sober consciousness that you can see everything is kind of coming from the same source and they are all informing one another. Um, just, just take it from there if there's anything that comes Here's up from that. Here's the beauty of it. When you get to the stage where you realize that everything emanates from just the number one and 
then you start thinking, okay, so I'm experiencing this oneness all around me and all of its different manifestations that are all geometric at their base. So who is the number one? And then you realize that you are. You're the number one. Some people go way off into solipsism where they think they're the only being and it's all them and there's no one else, no one else experiencing this. And they say, well, I know I'm real, but it's anything else. It's all fake. It's just me. Again, they go to an extreme and they go too far and they don't have evidence for that. And it's just, that's, that, that seems to be a human tendency. All right. You are the one experiencing itself all around you. And then you realize that you, you have a unique identifier. You have your own six. Okay, so this sounds like it's going to be more, oh, this is, you're just the universe experiencing itself. We're all one, and you're just like fragments or pieces of the universe. Heard all this before. You don't have to be a, quote, polymath. I've heard dummies on the internet talk about this and how that's their belief. So you're one with a, quote, grapist? Or a genocidal tyrant? Ow of China or Stalin? Are you one with what has caused massive, massive suffering to hundreds of millions? Are you just one with them? Are they the same as you? Then you're mental. It's that, it's that simple. Then you're mental. You're mental. Because you'll never convince me of that. I'm not even like that, much less am I, quote, one with that. Okay? I don't want to be near that. I want to be so far away from not only that, but so far away from this realm and so far away from everyone. So far away that no one can find me. So some people will be like, why are you doing this then? I mean, I'm trying to help people. And, and I got to be honest, I don't like most, quote, humans. I just don't. Does that mean I, quote, hate them? No. But I don't want to be near them. I want to rest. And in this, in this lifetime, I have so many people trying to pull me in different directions, uh, being demanding, wanting things from me, wanting knowledge, wanting me to cover this. Just you, you name it. Wanting everything from me. All the time. It's been that way my whole life. I'm so tired of it. And yet I keep trying to help and help and help. Does that mean I hate humans? No, I wouldn't be trying to help you out of this hellhole if I hated you. But do I want to be near you? Do I want you clinging to me like, like fucking Velcro? Like people seem to love to do? No, I don't. No, I don't. I want to be so far away, as I've said before. I don't believe in light years, but if they existed, it would be in the billions of the hundreds, hundreds of billions of light years away where you, you could just not find me to stalk me and be obsessive and be like Velcro on me. I don't want that. I don't want that. And that's what so many humans do. And some just get so enthralled with me right away. They're just, they're just all over me. I don't want that. Enjoy peace and solitude. And again, I'm not saying that no women understand this or want that, but for the most part, women love drama. They do. They don't understand a man's desire for fucking peace and quiet and solitude and have my own thoughts. What do I mean by that? I don't even like a car horn honking or a car alarm going off in the distance or somebody's dog barking and they never let their dog in. It's barking away. It's disturbing my thought. I want to be somewhere that I can think in peace. I enjoy my beautiful thoughts and my beautiful solitude my beautiful ideas, my beautiful madness. More than words. More than I think anyone listening to this can understand. I don't want to assume. Maybe someone can. I don't want to assume. But maybe some can. But if I had to hedge my bets, I'd say, I don't think so. I don't think anyone values that stuff as much as I do. Like, perhaps I don't want to spend an eternity alone but for the most part, the more I am alone, the more that I enjoy it. The more I enjoy it. And just 
keep, not, I don't know, I don't know if I'd say keeping people at a distance. I do enjoy some conversations, whether it's online or on the phone, sometimes. But I just don't want somebody fucking pulling at me all the time. And that's what, there's such a tendency for so many in this realm to do that. And I just don't want that. I don't want that at all. I don't want that. So are we, quote, all one? Then explain my desire to want to be away from the, quote, collective, so far away that they can never find me. Explain that. Explain that desire in me, if we're all, quote, one. Just explain that. Because it doesn't fit your theory. So what people do with those types of theories is they, they ignore all of the stuff that doesn't fit. That's what they tend to do. That's a huge tendency with people. I don't fit your theory. I'm a complete anomaly. anomaly sorry. Excuse me. I'm a complete anomaly. I don't fit your goddamn theory. Does that mean I can't laugh, have fun, enjoy the company of another, of a human, let's say? Sure I can. Sure I can. Do I want them clinging on to me like fucking Velcro? And no, this hasn't happened recently, but it has happened in my lifetime many times. And I just, I don't want to deal with that ever again. I just don't want that. I don't want to be smothered. I don't want people on my heels. I just don't want that. Some people have said, you're turning, you, you want to be a cult leader. I don't want followers on my heels. I want to put, I want to push people away from me. I don't want to draw them close to me. And I, I don't, I don't want a cult. I don't want a cult. I would be the worst cult leader ever. I'd lock the fucking doors of the place of worship so you couldn't get in to get near me. And I would be a hermit and say, stay away from me. Okay? You don't understand. I've heard, I've heard it all in this realm. You need, Stephen, you need people to be inspired. You need people for ideas. You need people to inspire your, your poetry, your artwork. Believe me, I have enough for the next 10 billion fucking eternities of ideas and inspiration without being around a single person for I don't know how many months now. I don't need to be around people. They drain my inspiration. They drain my imagination. They drain my energy. They basically are like vampires, energy vampires. They don't inspire me. It's the opposite. I don't need them for that. That's within me. Okay? That's another thing people do. Oh, well, you, you must be channeling. You must be getting all this stuff from somewhere else. It's mine. It's my own. I'm not channeling from anywhere else or anyone else or any beings. I'm not going to give credit to any other beings, what I see. Those visions are mine. Those ideas are mine. Imagination is my own. I have my own kingdom, my own imagination. Okay? And man, I can't, tell, I can't express it how far away from this place I want to be. I know I can't fix this place. I'm doing something good. I'm helping you out, trying to help you out before I leave this realm. And that's all I can do. But by helping you, does it mean I love or that I just want to be surrounded by humanity and have you, you know, swarming me to fucking hug me and be all over me? No, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. You know, fame would be a nightmare for me. I don't want that. Don't want that. I shun your society more than most, more than most, okay? I still have some human contact, but not very much, not very much. Signature, your own number per se. And then the universe around you is just one over that number. So in particle physics and in quantum physics, so there's a fellow by the name of Niels Bohr. You may have heard of him, the Bohr atom model. So he was in the Solvang conference with Einstein back in 1933. And, and they were like friends, but also argued a lot, right? So he was more on the quantum physics side and Einstein would be more on the standard model side. You could say that. And, and a lot of Einstein's teachings, even though his mentor, 
was pre predominantly a fellow by the name of Max Planck, who was a quantum physicist as well, who famously said, there is no matter as such. There's only a conscious mind at the basis of all of our universal experience. So going back to the Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr. I'm going to jump in here. They don't talk about the suffering in this realm. They don't talk about this realm being ruled by evil that creates suffering and that the realm's design creates suffering, life eating life. They don't talk about the trickery, the lies, here in this realm and in the astral realm. They miss so much. So science does not explain it all. And it's not going to help you get out of here. Okay? So that's what I focus on. I'm focused on getting out, and I'm, that's what I'm trying to help and teach. And I'm going to end this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you enjoyed listening. I've had a long day and I've made a lot of, done a lot of work today, including some videos. So take care, everyone. Have a good night. Bye.